Welcome back to another edition of All the Smoke. Jack, it's been a minute, bro. Been a minute, but we back in this big. Like we never left, man. We got a a, a special one today. We uh, got an audience too in this motherfucker yeah, too. It's, it's packed out out here in Mount. Yeah, yeah I'm just saying. It's it's a lister. Right. We got a lister in the it's building. Only right, man. Uh, where do I start? Rapper, actor, songwriter, producer, Grammy Award winner. The one and only, Ludacris. Male gigolo. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, Appreciate okay. you, man. Appreciate Hell you. Hell yeah. You, man. <laughs> First of all, man, congratulations on the uh, the, the star on Hollywood. Thank you, man. This, Thank I you, mean, man. The, you know, the, come on, man. What is... Nah, I, I tell everybody, it, it makes me stand still for a second because I'm sure just like y'all, I'm constantly looking forward. It's been two decades of I never look back. You know what I mean? It's hard for me to take in the present moment because right. I'm always looking just forward. looking at what's yeah. next and this is one of those times where it honestly just made me it making me stop for a second and look around and you know just it's amazing like it's, it's hard to put into words because of all the peers and all the people that showed up for that mm -hmm. and um you know to hear someone else and certain people talk about the accolades and talk about the things that you've done and the history that you've made that's different that's different. What kind of stuff comes to mind though? Because like you said, we're always so hamster wheel. What's next? We're after that next. So when you do finally take a look back at your journey and it's been 20 plus years, like what's what what are some of the things that jump out to you and what do you remember about those things? I think um where the journey started to where it's at right now. You know, you hear people say those cliche things like, you know, would you ever have thought that you would have been doing this or doing that? And the the honest answer to that question outside of music. Um, would be no, mm. you know, things just, a lot of unexpected things happen in everybody's lives and you kind of have to go with the path to a degree. Um, and so to answer your question, you know, I started in radio. I wanted to, be, I, I always knew I wanted to do music, but when I say I started in radio, that was kind of like my means to an end. So in case y'all don't know the story. Love it, love it. Yeah, I was at this station <laughs> and I was trying to get the attention of certain people so that I could put the music out. And it was like amazing because at during this time I'm like 17, 18 years old at the radio station, and like a local celebrity, and it was a pit stop. And for a second, I was like, "This is this is pretty nice" because I'm over <laughs> here getting more money than I ever got in my life, right. hosting parties, getting cash, and I'm I'm in music, so I you know what I mean, like around it, and I'm around all these celebrities, I'm making friends. But the whole goal was to go up there to play the music for people and try and get put on, which you know ended up me putting money in my own pocket and investing in myself mm. and putting out my own album. And that's what it got there. But like I said, the radio, music, acting, hosting, producing, creating. Yeah, right. That's when I look back and I'm like, wow. Well, just on some real shit, just congratulations, bro. Because like you, you said, obviously we were fans of music from the beginning to, to where it's been. But like you said, the crossover what is it what makes everything else stand out even more so absolutely man we've been to a we, we've been to a few parties together yeah, my yeah, brother come I on, definitely come on, <laughs> Always, we've had some definitely. time these are my guys by the way man we yeah. got true hey, we history came, yes. hey we came and fucked his uh hoop game up one year <laughs> yeah, jack and i, I were hitting on some other shit man yeah. listen it was Luda in day prime weekend. shape too mm -hmm. Luda day weekend we have the basketball uh tournament every single year and it's like Honestly, the the basketball players that come are not really supposed to be giving it. They all they're not supposed to be playing at a hundred percent because you know if they get hurt, then it's 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 gonna be hell for them. You know when they <laughs> coaches from everybody. These two motherfuckers showed up like they was playing a, a real goddamn <laughs> game. Hey, we was, and we was high as the cost of living too. <laughs> Out there sure hooping, was. hooping, real shit, dunking, bro. blocking shots, shooting deep ass threes. <laughs> that shit was fun though. Man, I'm glad y'all. You had just retired, right? Yep. And I have I was like I was like a year or two away yep. from retiring. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, new music in the works. It is. It's been in the works for a minute, man. And then I get a script for another Fast and Furious right, goddamn movie. Right. But, <laughs> but uh, no, nah, it has been. I, I, I'm joking, but what I'm saying is, after putting out nine, ten plus projects. You hear people say the best artist, which is so true, that your best art and your best music comes from life and experiences. So if I put out 10 projects, I, I gotta live some life again and I gotta make it authentic and I gotta make it organic and I gotta make it real. And it, it takes a little time as you continue to reinvent yourself and still satisfy the core ludicrous audience, it will take a little more time as opposed to just throwing music no, out No, definitely. There. Because 
the one thing about me is, you know, that shattering that stereotype of just because he's doing all these other things, he doesn't have it musically anymore. Mm. That's my number one goal, mm. you know. So I put out these Some little freestyles. things. Freestyles, yeah. I'll be so, keeping it. Yeah, so it's just like to show people, man, look, make no mistake. I, I 100% still hungry, still got this shit. Mm. I'm just doing other things that, you know, are are adding to my legacy. But make no mistake, I know what got me here. Mm -hmm. Period. As you continue to add to your legacy, what are some of the new thing? Any new things you're working on right now, or projects, or in terms of music, anything outside of music? Tell Man. us, tell us what's on your slate. I know your movie's coming out soon. Oh yeah, yeah. No, it's a, it's a lot of it's a lot of different projects. Uh, movies, obviously, this Fast and Furious Ten just came out. Um, I think the cat is out the bag. We can say that. It is more than one because there's like a part A here, so it's it's open ended. Okay. Um, I have a movie that Will Packer produced and Tim Story directed. I've been wanting to work with them forever. It comes out at the end of this year on Disney uh, Plus, and that's called Dashing. Me and Lil Rail, Black Santa Claus movie. You know, they kept saying they they haven't seen a movie with a Black Santa Claus, and I'm like, I, I had to think back, and this might be the first Black Santa Claus like starring movie. Um, we just talked about working on music. If you haven't heard The Karma's World, this is based off my daughter on Netflix. Congratulations, four seasons man. That's of that. dope. Merchandising in store, streaming, um, chicken and beer restaurant. We about to open up one in LAX. There's one in Atlanta right now. So uh, what else? What am I forgetting? Yeah. I know it's a lot of stuff, man, <laughs> right. but those are kind of like the main components right about now, I guess you could say. I mean, we were going to get to it later, but you brought it up now. Getting an opportunity to work with your daughter and just see her fall in love with you know, a space that you're in and her grow in it. Uh, yeah. What is that like for you? I mean, listen, man, people talk about what we doing on this earth. Why are we here? That's a, that's one of those full circle moments that, you know, I've, I've done my duty in terms of helping the next generation with self-confidence and all the things that they're dealing with right now, you know, it being inspired by my daughter. So it's unreal to her. Like she, she has no words. I mm -hmm, mean, she's mm -hmm. out here. You go in Target, you go in Walmart, right. and you see a, a a doll in your likeness, and you're hearing this music. I was just, I took my youngest daughter, who is almost two years old, to the playground the other day, and I kid you not, I saw another kid that was about four years old playing on the playground, and she had the Karma's World doll in her hand while she was playing. And it's like, there's a lot of, you know, people can tell you certain things. People can say how it's right. affecting. You Come can on, read man. text. You could look on social media. But when you at the playground Feel randomly it. with your daughter and you mm -hmm. see another kid, that's a whole different kind of, mm -hmm. wow. Like, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing, man. Congratulations. Beautiful thing. Thank you. Fast and Furious 10. <laughs> and we right. say 10. Like, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Number 10. The first thing that comes to my mind is, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck, man? right? I mean, listen, I can only be honest. And I say that because me and Tyrese both came in at two. Too fast, too furious. So we didn't even start the franchise. We got lucky. Rest in peace to John Singleton. John Singleton takes, you know, he's known for taking Ice Cube and um, and certain people from the music world, Tyrese, and throwing them in movies. And then all of a sudden they have a whole career. Um, he took me and 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 put me in Too Fast, Too Furious. Tyrese had already done Baby Boy with him. And it changed the entire direction and trajectory of my of my life. Mm. Because I was on tour with Eminem at the time, and I remember it like it was yesterday. Um, I got the call from John Singleton. He was like, I want you to try out for this part. I'm backstage about to go on in like 30, 30 minutes. And he's like, I'm sending you the sides right now. I'm like, <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, like, why the fuck is this such a rush? Like, can I get a day, you know, to look over these sides and stuff? Um, and I read the sides and, and did everything. Come to find out later, Ja Rule was supposed to get the uh, part. And I don't know what happened because I don't want to misspeak. But however it happened, they came to me. And that those were the best sloppy seconds I've ever had in my <laughs> goddamn life. My yeah, so that no. being said, I got the part. He called me the next day. It was like, you got the part? Changed my life. So when I say, bringing it full circle, when I say, God damn, too fast, too furious, you come back in five. So years have passed. So then it did, you know what I'm saying? Then it did three and four, and then you just get this call, we want you to come back. And I'm like, oh shit, all right. That's a surprise. And then you go six, seven, eight, nine. 
What year? I did just it? said it's one part of ten. Right. That means it's more than this motherfucker. Right. Bro. Two parts. Are you kidding me? <laughs> It's the gift that keeps on giving, bro. Mm. And when you say 10, to me, I was happy at two. That's basically right. what I'm yeah. trying to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So to be in seven of them, is, it blows my mind, man. Like Now we have lifetime memories with every single cast member. Like it's This is a quarter century of our lives. So our families hang out with each other. Right. Our kids know so, each other. Yeah. Me and Vin's youngest daughters are like best friends, birthday parties. I've spent Thanksgiving. You know what I mean? Like it's that right, it's real. It's that real. And and while we on it, just so that y'all know, and y'all could ask Tyrese the same thing. I put my cast up against any cast in movie history in terms of when you yell cut and the movie and the camera goes off of who really fucks with each other. Mm. Truly, nobody can fuck with us when it comes to that. That's dope. Period. That's deep. All of us. That's all for life too. Yes. But she just they start talking about two, now we're at ten. Like how crazy. Has, the, has each movie got? And like, do you do your own stunts? That's a good ass question. Let me ask them. <laughs> let me ask them. <laughs> so let me break this shit down real quick. Person. That's a good question. Cause because people people really need to know. So your your first your first question was before you said you did your own stunts, was what? What was it? How the, the movie gets crazier, yeah. like how crazy do they get each right. movie? So what I was gonna say was that's one of the things that we seem to defy stereotypically, because you know, as sequels go on and on. Before it was like sometimes they would get worse and worse. Right. Um, arguably, these have gotten better and better to the point where it's like people just trying to understand how the hell we keep doing this shit. And I also hear people say all the time, why do y'all keep doing these movies? That's the dumbest fucking question in the world. I'm gonna tell you why. Because no matter what industry we in, podcast, music, movies, it's all about a bottom line. Right. It's all about how much you spend compared to how much you make. Right. We're making billions of fucking dollars. That's what, every time. Bro, and I'm saying that like, I'm just giving you my heart. I'm not I'm not trying to brag or nothing. Right. So when you say, why do y'all keep That's why. When some of y'all keep saying, why the fuck do y'all keep shooting these movies? Let me tell you why. Because if you spend 200 million and you make a billion, mm. who the fuck is you going to tell to stop <laughs> shooting movies right. when you make it 800 oh, motherfucking million dollars? Yeah. Every time. How? I need people to stop asking that question. Even if you don't like it. Right. Even if you don't want to watch it. That's okay. Stop asking that goddamn right. question. Right. Right. That is the answer. Because there is a person who is a CEO and a whole bunch of executives that work at an office and they say we just made $800 million. God damn it. We're going to make another one. That's of why it's part two. Period. <laughs> Shit. And the second part of your question. No, yeah. Stunts. Um, when we first started in Too Fast, Too Furious, and on the first one, they they used to let us do our own stunts. Meaning they would have like, we would be driving the cars and everything, and they would have duplicate cars waiting just in case we wreck one of them. And then we'd get in the other one and just keep going. You know, seatbelts strapped up, everything safe. As the budgets continued to grow, mm -hmm. they said, get the fuck out of them damn seats, <laughs> yeah. and we're going to replace you with stuntmen. And no, we don't do our own stunts anymore, to a degree. Like, we do little stuff, but the big shit, we just leave to the stunt. You wouldn't have did that stunt in real life when you was pranking Lil Jon. Well, that, hell no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. No, nah, that, that was falling off a damn balcony. Yeah. I, don't, I don't play like that. I like to do crazy shit, but play, you know, jumping off balconies is not one of those yeah. things. Yeah, nah, not at all. You speak uh, highly of, of Vin Diesel. What, what makes him the face of the franchise? That's another good question, because y'all are asking questions that like people don't ask, one, and then number two, that's going to allow me to tell you shit that other people don't fucking know. Right. Um, Vin is one of those people that he's okay with not getting the credit. And what I mean by that is what makes him so special, he's a producer on these films. When I tell you this man eats, sleeps, breathes, shits, fast and furious, everything. <laughs> but it's like other people will kind of get the credit. He just stays behind the scenes, but he's involved in every element, in every detail. I'm talking about to my character, to Tyrese's character, not just his character. He's looking out for everything and he's looking out for the heart of what makes this franchise, you know, it's just the heartbeat of it. Because, you know, you can see all these flying stunts and all this craziness and people can say it, but 
if you really think about when you watch these movies, why people keep coming back to the theater, there there's a certain element of heart. And I know people joke about the family and us saying family all the time, but he is so in tune with making sure that there's heart moments that leave you even subconsciously wondering why you want to keep going back and watching this fucking movie and why you are just so tied to it. And besides that's what it the is. Action, besides the action. Besi no, besides all the yeah. besides the stuff that's on the 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 surface, mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. He's he gets way beneath the surface and understands what makes the human fiber and people tick. Mm -hmm. That's why he's so phenomenal. And this is what he does, man. He's methodical, very methodical. That's dope. Absolutely. The NBA playoffs are coming into the final stretch. The finals are right around the corner, and all the action is heating up. Feel the action with DraftKings Sportsbook, today's video sponsor. In honor of conference finals, DraftKings is offering new customers a winning offer. All new customers place a $5 wager, and you'll get $150 in bonus bets instantly. Yep, that's right. New customers bet $5 on any wager, and you will receive $150 in bonus bets instantly. You can use those bonus bets to win even more. Try out DraftKings Same Game Parlays, including the All the Smoke Same Game Parlay. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use the promo code SMOKE, bet $5 on any wager, and get $150 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code SMOKE, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. The NBA season is coming to a close, and that means we only have a few more weeks left of All the Smoke Same Game Parlay. Every Friday, we're cooking up the new bets using DraftKings Sportsbook. While you still can, make sure you go back and check out the All the Smoke Same Game Parlays. Head over to the app and see our picks and who we're riding with. The action only happens at DraftKings Sportsbook. Where does The Rock stand with the Fast and Furious franchise? That's a good question as well. <laughs> <laughs> you would have to go see the movie to see, man. That's all mm, I can tell you. So he might be in it, Jack. Yeah, I mean, he might not too. <laughs> <laughs> they got to break bread with Rock, huh? Right, you got to break that bread. He may or yes, may sir. not be. We just don't right. know. And that's the story with every character in the right. past. If you think they died, the motherfuckers right. came right. back. Yeah, right. <laughs> you ain't really dead. Come on. No one ever dies. Hey, keep in mind, there's one more coming, so... <laughs> You might right. see the ghost yeah. of. And, and that The Rock never died in the franchise, by the way. He made a spinoff and everything. But no, nah, that's my guy, man. That's my guy. Shout out to The Rock. What's it like working with him? I mean, the he cast... He just following our, uh, our Instagram. We try to get to him on. If that's your guy, we, oh, hey, Luda, we going to ask you at the end of the show, but we need that plug. Yeah. Uh, he's listening. If he just followed y'all, he's watching. Yeah. That yeah. I do he know about. Our, our Trust me. Channel. All you got to you DM the motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> shit. I mean, the cast... He's on social media. He, he takes that shit serious. Straight straight I will straight tell up. you that. We need him. We need him. <laughs> Uh, I mean, obviously a great cast. Uh, as I told you, we're shooting your, your, your man Tyrese later. But what is it like working with The Rock in particular? I mean, he's just someone. We've all followed his path to where he is as well. And he sit, seems like he's sitting on top of the world. Absolutely. The most disciplined human being I've ever met in my entire life. Uh, Mark Wahlberg sits up there as well. But when you talk about The Rock, it's the closest thing to to a robot. And I mean this in the best way possible. Like... You know, he'll get up three o'clock in the morning. This man will go do cardio for 30, 40 minutes every single day, no matter how much sleep he's got. Sometimes he'll get two hours of sleep, depending on what he had the day before. Do that cardio, go eat a, a steak and like eight eggs. and <laughs> You know what I mean? Eat 30 minutes later, do workout for two hours, and he's, you know, weightlifting. And it's just like, then he'll go to work. So now it's like six in the morning, seven in the morning. He'll go and shoot a movie, and he's there all day, and he's eating every two, three hours on the dot. And what he's eating is very specific to the macronutrients and all of the exact <laughs> right, right. protein to fucking carbs <laughs> to vegetables that are supposed to work exactly in sync with what the fuck he just did three, four hours before that. And the man like go get five, six hours of sleep on a good day and do the same thing all over again every single day mm -hmm. and drink water and that's it. It goes crazy. So if you ask what it's like working with him, man, it, it's inspiring working with him. And I used to be the smallest guy on the Fast and Furious cast and being around him, now not so much. He got me on my shit. Like right. I just monitor and I watched and I observed and I like took certain elements of how I want to incorporate right. that into my <laughs> life yep. and, and figure it out, man. Because it's like when you see somebody and they show you what's possible, psh, that's what we need. You know what I mean? Like we hear about things 
you guys know the same thing before you started balling. Sometimes you see see that person in that car, you go to see that house. When you're able to make it tangible, then it's like you know, you know, without shadow of a doubt that you can make it happen. Mm. Paul Walker. Yeah. How was it work? Rest first of all, rest in peace. Mm -hmm. Um I know he's he was a brother to you, and I know what it feels like to lose a brother, but give me uh for the people that don't know not only how great of an actor he was, but how great of a human being was Paul Walker. Listen, I don't even have to tell you. you I think people know. Mm -hmm. If you ever saw him speak, if you ever just felt his presence, even through the screen, um, you know, on interviews that he's done, if you ever saw his daughter, if you ever saw the work that he did through his reach out worldwide, his, um, you know, foundation and him trying to preserve the, the planet and the earth and save animals and all of these different things. Absolutely amazing. We're both Virgos. His, his, our birthdays are one day apart. Mm -hmm. Extremely co close, um, very humble. Man, just, just love, man. It was, you, know, you know what's so similar about us is his energy wasn't just, he couldn't give that out to just anyone, basically. Mm -hmm. So he was very reserved in a sense that He's very sensitive towards who he can be around because you know you got energy drainers, mm -hmm. and so his his energy was so pure and so magnifying that he could only be around certain people, mm. and it's just like even more magnified now. That's mm. the best way that I can mm. put it. It's deep. Real deep. Rest in peace. And man. his daughter is is in the movie. Dope. That's dope. She got a cameo in there, yeah. so his legacy. Live it lives on. on. Absolutely, yes, as it should. Man, fuck y'all for getting me secondhand high right now. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't smoking Got you forever. comfortable. That's man, I'm high as hell. This motherfucker hey. like, what the hell? I ain't, that's, hey. I ain't this hey, shit. Yeah. Hey. Hey. hey, that's how we rear you in. You gonna start saying, I ain't never told nobody this, but... That's, that's how we rear you in. Y'all gonna see me on camera start going right. like this. <laughs> like, smoke it? Nah, I'm just fine. <laughs> uh, born, uh, born in Illinois, moved around a little bit, landed in Atlanta. Yeah. Uh, how old were you when you got there and what was your first impression? Yeah, my, my parents went to uh, University of Illinois, so fighting Illini. Um, and my dad moved to Atlanta really early after that. And so I used to, I would go stay with him summers when I was like six, seven years okay. old. And then I moved full time around nine. 10 and um man Atlanta shh, think about this like the crisscross era and the ABC era and I'm around I'm that young so I'm like man I gotta I know I can make it mm -hmm. it's like crisscross got discovered in a mall like that's where mm -hmm. Jermaine Dupri discovered them I don't know if y'all remember that like they were mm -hmm. walking around in a mall and JD was like them two kids are stars I'm about to make y'all millionaires and so to me I'm like shit man I'm t you know I can do this I'm talented Atlanta is the Mecca, man. It's the Motown of the South. And, you know, people said that early on, but I'm sure after two decades of seeing what's going on in the industry and how prominent it is, there's no doubting that at this point. Mm -hmm. So you had the LaFace, you had the the Dallas Austin uh, Rowdy Records, you know, during this time. This is the Freaknik era that everybody's mm -hmm. bringing back up right now. Best place on earth, man. G it's DJ black King. man's heaven. <laughs> Black man's heaven. Y'all know that. Mm -hmm. Why y'all asking me this shit? Y'all was that freak, nigga. You I know still, what the I hell I'm talking about. I still live in Atlanta. I no, I wasn't went in 2003 yeah. and I ain't left. Yeah, no, Jack, set up, yeah, Jack set up home there. Yeah, you know what it is, man. Yes, it's, you know, Magic City, man. <laughs> Gentleman's Club. Don't remind me. There's a lot of history. 559-112. Five, five, when you really think about it, man. So much culture, man. So much history. Birthed so many stars. So much talent. Uh, producers. Just movers, shakers, industry insiders, and you know, just trendsetters, man. Mm -hmm. <coughs> trendsetters, mm -hmm. trendsetters, trendsetters. Yeah. Uh, at what age did you find music? As far as feeling like you could, or you said when you saw all yeah. of it, but is, what, what, that's when you started, or you had already started? I had already started, man. I made my first song when I was nine. Um, some people know this story, but this audience, you'll probably hear it for the first time, man. I. I was nine and I lied and said I was ten because my first song was called "I'm Bad." I'm 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 bad. I might be. Damn, what the fuck was it? Um, I'm cool. I'm bad. I might be ten, but I can't survive without my girlfriend. So I had to rhyme with girlfriend. <laughs> I had to rhyme with girlfriend. So I was like, shit, I'm nine, but I need something to rhyme with fucking ten. This is the preliminary. You know, this is yeah. this is the early on rhymes. This is the nursery rhyme shit. So I was like, I'm I'm gonna say ten. I'm ten, and then. 
you as rap goes, you could be braggadocious. You got to speak shit into existence. Right. Mm -hmm. And what do you know? Before you know it, I was ten. Yeah. <laughs> and I could say, and I could say that damn song the way that I intended to say it yeah. when I when I wrote it. Yeah. With honesty, integrity, <laughs> <laughs> and pure heart. So yeah, nah. To, to answer your question, it was a little bit before nine, but I made my first like official song when I was nine. Mm -hmm. So that's how long I've been doing. Mm. Uh, nine, I could be ten, right? But I can't survive <laughs> without my, my girlfriend. girlfriend. And and LL Cool J is who made me want to rap, which is extremely phenomenal because he was one of the ones that just spoke at the Hollywood Walk of Fame uh, star ceremony. But when I'm Bad came out, you know, this record started off with, um, no rapper can rap quite like, like I, I can. can. I take a muscle bound man and put, put his face, face in the sand. sand. Like, yeah. how do you start off a record like Tough. that? Yeah. So for, uh, you know, a kid like myself, I heard that shit, I was like, ooh, it's giving me confidence that I never even knew was right. there. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. Shit, I mean, that's, that's what made me want to rap. Catalog, very impressive. One of the best to have done it. Uh, any you, body of work stick out as your favorite? Oh, you talking about from my songs? Yeah, no, yeah, you're, yeah, from what you've done. I bet y'all can guess. Which Are you? Uh, what, what, let's be specific though. Are we asking which song is my favorite song? No, I'm talking about uh, uh, album. Oh, album. Chicken and chicken. I'm curious to know what you're gonna guess, I man. Mean, Hold I, on, cause I'm thinking chicken and beer. That's hard because it's every single album has its own different sentimental value. Like Chicken and Beer became a restaurant, release therapy, won a rap album. But man, you know, people have asked me that question and it's like, I don't even think I've been able to truly give a real answer, like really thinking about it. If I had to say it, man, I would just say, and you close, it would probably be word of mouth. Mm. Just because, mm -hmm. man, like, the world is in the palm of my fucking hand, man. Mm -hmm. well, you get with you know, and you know why? It's like you get over that sophomore jinx. That's big for artists as well. And maybe not as much now to a degree because it's a lot of singles and streaming, but you know, people would be like, you know, if your second album don't compare to your first and all mm -hmm. this other shit. Once I did once I made it over that hump and I knew what them first week sales was gonna be and that shit went on right. to sell like triple platinum, I was like, Oh, it's over. I'm good. When was that like? Oh one. Word of mouth was two thousand one, two thousand two. Yeah, because yeah, we was Chicken in college. Yeah, was 2003, we so was in we was in college there. at that time. Yeah, I used to push yeah. from L.A. to Sacramento, bumping that shit. And then move, bitch was was obviously on word of mouth, and it was like, who man, was the bitch that needed to the move? <laughs> <laughs> it's all type of bitches that need to move. Till this day, it could be, and it's not just human beings. It's cars. Right. It's yeah. come on, man. It's the it's hump whatever. off your back. You know what I mean? It's whatever, whatever it is. It's whoever yeah. gave me that secondhand smoke. They need to move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get out the way. But no, nah, I was gonna say, man, when you talk about cattle. I don't even know if y'all was getting into this shit. I used to be in radio, so I might get a little bit ahead of you motherfuckers for a second. But what I was going to say was, you can never tell somebody how much of a hit song you have. Like, it may go up the charts, it may hit number one, but in terms of being like embedded in hip hop culture, right. we, we talking about this song, it's 20 years after. So this is two decades, and this song is still relevant, humbly speaking. That's when you know you got some shit. You got to wait. You got to wait your records out. That's why doing verses and shit like that is so dope to me to what Timberland and and, um, and Swiss Beats have come up with because it shows not only the artists, but it shows the rest of the world how records age. It's like you playing your cards and how you play your hand and how you know how it's dealt. That shit can be an ego mm -hmm. blow mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. some artists, it, it, what's so dope about verses is it shows you where the artist's ego is at. When them motherfuckers want to play a record that only they think right. is the shit. And then they play that motherfucking card, and the rest of the world sitting there like, <laughs> mm -hmm. and they, you, that that's reality. Mm. The whole world just shows. Usually, you do that shit with your management and your people. I'm telling you, man, what the fuck mm -hmm. is you talking about? And nobody, you don't really get no accountability. No real shit Psh, on verses. <laughs> Instant you know. accountability <laughs> for your actions and decisions, bro. That's funny. Instant. That's why that, I love that shit. You just mentioned streaming. What is the state of the music business in your eyes right now? We seen Snoop go in uh, the other day on the stream. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I just saw the headline. I didn't. I, I, listen, I read, yeah, listen I read it. it in no, Snoop's. listen to it. Listen to it. You got to hear it the way he's saying. It. He's like, I might not even shoot. I shouldn't. Maybe I shouldn't be saying this. Did he say it on your show? <laughs> no, nah, it was on. Where was it at? It was at the 
Yeah, what he was like on a panel for something. <laughs> he, he hey, right. hey, hey, give us one of them lines. What did he say, Jelani? Hey, give us hey, one of them lines. Uh, uh, who, who, who's Mr. Stream, cuz? <laughs> <laughs> it's on a real panel. <laughs> Man, I mean, there, there's so many ways that that question can go, but I would just say, not outside of what Snoop is saying, because I agree 100% with what he's saying, but you know, when if you don't evolve, then you'll evaporate. That's kind of one of my things. Is you know, you have to kind of embrace what's new. So you can't just because I didn't start in the streaming days doesn't mean that I hate what's going on here. It's just it's evolution. It is what it is. Now you're gonna have your gripes with the business aspect of it or what's going on behind the scenes, and you might have your gripes of how people are trying to manipulate streaming and things of that nature. But at the end of the day. We all listen. We all playing a game, man. Like you got to mm. play the game. Come you got to play the fucking game, or, or you played. can quit. Or get, you or can get fold. Played. You can Straight put up. your hand down. You can put your chips away. It you ain't put for your everybody. Money away. It ain't for everybody. Yeah, and I mean that in every aspect, not just people that's right. watching this. Like not just the music game. Straight up, life, Mo movie game, life game, basketball game. Y'all know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it just it is what it is, man. You got to play it. Don't don't hate the player. Mm. Hate the game. Talk to him. You, you didn't only come on the <laughs> come on the scene with a new sound. You came with the visuals, like how how big was how big yeah, was that in your that mind? That shit was dope, man. It was big, but you know there's a there's a, a downside to it because even Jay Z was one of the ones that said he, you know he don't think I get the lyrical credit that I deserve because of the visual uh, of mm -hmm. the visuals. So you know the the answer to that is like people ask me, you know why don't you think get the get the credit? It's, I play too goddamn much. That's mm -hmm. what I do, you know, and I wouldn't have it any other way. That's, That's why my name is Ludacris. It's beyond crazy. It's wild. It's ridiculous. I like. Uh, post effects and augmenting reality, big ass shoes, a big ass chain, and mm -hmm. bobblehead, and all that. So it's like, I get it. You know, I can't be mad at it. I just have to show the multifaceted aspects of myself. And I actually love that. You know why? Because there's the, the good side of it is there's this thing where if somebody comes out with, you know, certain uh, material and it's like the best thing that anyone has ever seen or heard of, you you have to compare to that every single time. So I like kind of being somewhere in the atmosphere where you you are idling on the arguably one of the best and you still have time to prove it as opposed to it's just definitive. He's he's one thing. You know what I mean? So I'm like, I love being a lot of things because then I can come and at any moment, let's just say if I which I'm going to do, just drop <coughs> doing everything for like a certain amount of time and just focus on one thing. It's not even a question. I know I could kill it. Same thing with, like with music, and that's what I'm saying I'm going to do. So stakes are high, but I'm willing to take the the, the risk, and I'm definitely willing to take the, that pressure. What was the biggest budget for one of your videos? That's a good-ass question, but I want to say like half a mil, something like that. It probably wasn't like the million. You know, maybe it inched up to that 600000 but, you know, you hear about when Diddy and Mace did the $1 million videos. It was a couple of those. So you know the the can't stop won't stop if if that's what it was or yeah what was the what was the Diddy and Mace video the, 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 no, the shiny no. suit uh, more yeah. money more problems yeah so more money more problems was a million I remember um, I think Wu Tang a Triumph video mm -hmm. Steve Rifkin said he did a million it's a, it's a bunch of so it was like maybe about five or ten I never made it to the million category I never wanted to do that but I did about half of that. <laughs> For sure. Right. <laughs> um, 2000s, you cross paths with many legends. We, we try to compile a list. Uh, when we tell you the name and the, and, and, and the song, just tell us a little bit about it. Uh, mm -hmm. Nate Dogg and Area Coats. Wow, man. That's my man. Rest Nate, in peace. I'm the biggest Nate Dogg fan in the world, man. People know it. And I think I've done more songs with Nate Dogg collectively than any other artist. Maybe Sierra, but... Nate Dogg was just, man, he's just amazing. He's just amazing. He smoked the whole, wherever you at, <laughs> he'll smoke that whole shit down. And, uh, you know, he just, you you throw on the beat, he'll smoke, take him about an hour or two. When he jumps in that booth, everybody's paying attention, kills it every single time. But just such a, a dope demeanor about himself. Cool, calm, collected. And, you know, just how he chose his melodies and, and how he chose to do certain things musically was just always surprising to you because it was, a, it was out of the unexpected. I know people would say, talk about his tone and stuff, but he was one of the most complex individuals 
when it comes to singing not only hooks but just entire songs that I ever encounter. So mm. I'm mm. huge Nate Dogg fan, mm. man. Uh, Pharrell and the Neptunes, Southern Hospitality. Wait, I was going. Something just came to mind when I was like, one of my favorite rap lines I said on one of Nate Dogg's songs, and I said something like, um, "Something, something, going to bed. You got a frog in your throat, like Miss Piggy giving head." It was one of my, <laughs> bro, I was just like, "God damn!" Sometimes I be saying some of the hardest <laughs> shit, slick shit yeah. in the world. Okay, yeah. sorry. What was the next? No, nah, that was a bar. Rest that's in peace, Nate Dogg. Yeah, rest man, in that's, peace. That's a that's bar. A bar. Man. Straight that's up. A bar. Man. Put me up there, man. Come that's on. A bar. Come on, man. <laughs> Uh, Pharrell and the Neptunes. <laughs> Pharrell and the Neptunes, man. Um, the the first thing that comes to mind, and y'all might not know this, for so Incognito was my independent album, and it was missing three songs when we signed the Def Jam, and not missing three songs but when we signed the Def Jam, we basically repackaged it and added three songs to it, and took like two or three songs off of what was on there, so that it, it was kind of repackaged in that now for the world as opposed to being sold out my trunk, and. Throw Them Bowls was one of those records. And I remember this was the like 11th inning. Like we got to turn the album in tomorrow. We going to Virginia. We going to holler at Pharrell. If anybody could give you a hit right. at the last minute, yep. it's Pharrell and Chad and the Neptunes. And we in Virginia, it's me and Shaka. And he throws on this beat and I'm vibing to it. I'm thinking it's cool. I'm not, you know, I'm not like thinking this is a hit. But I do what I do anyway. I go to the car. This is where I write all my music. I just go in a car. This is like my space. It's you where I zone car? out. In the car? In a car. So I, I'm in the parking lot, in the studio, in this truck, listening to the instrumental. I'm writing to it. All this shit's coming out. Cadillac grills, Cadillac mill. And I'm thinking it's cool. I come back in, you know, and I'm saying it for Shaka and Pharrell. These motherfuckers is like, oh, shit, this is it, this is it. And I'm still like, man, it's cool, man. It ain't... So, you know, Pharrell kind of like helps with the hook a little bit. All of a sudden, you know, they play it for me. And I'm still thinking that this is good, but I still don't think it's a hit. So we, you know, we put that shit on the album. I'm not thinking it's going to be a single because What's Your Fantasy is the first single. And then everyone identifies with that damn mm. Throw Them Bows. And it's crazy because you hear a lot of artists always saying, I knew that shit was, I knew it was a hit. I, I, for Southern Hospitality, I did not know that it was the hit that it became. Mm. And and what it is still till this day, mm. and that happens with artists all the time. Sometimes when you the one you least expect becomes a hit, and obviously sometimes your instincts are correct. Yeah. Sometimes your instincts are wrong. So <laughs> that's how the game goes. Uh, Nas and Jay, <laughs> do it for hip hop. Man, for me to get both of them on a record together, and this was right after they had squashed the beef. I just remember Jay kind of holding out. Um, because, you know, he liked to make it an element of surprise when you get him on a record. I think I got Nas on the record first, if I'm not mistaken. And then uh, Jay hopped on there. And the day we got both of those verses on there, we was just like, man, this is hip hop gold. And what better way to do this than to have a record that's just for the love of hip hop? This ain't, you know, if, you, if you're going to give a record to these two individuals, it's got to be something that's all about the heart. And we, you know, that, that could be the theme of this podcast. When we talk about Vin and heart, mm -hmm. when it comes to music, man, if it don't have heart to it, then I can easily see people saying, I ain't fucking right. with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Uh, welcome to Atlanta, Jermaine Dupree. Welcome to Atlanta, JD, man, mm. JD, JD. The first thing that comes to mind was way before that record was, uh, was made. Um, JD, I actually went to his house one time and this was when he had crisscross. He didn't know who the fuck I was. I just found out where he lived because he was in College Park, not far from where my pops lived. Had a gate around his crib. And one day I pulled up, I had my demo tape. I was gonna put the shit in the mailbox. I see this man walking outside in front of his house. I'm like, yo, JD, yo, yo. Now imagine this shit, like a complete fucking stranger. This little light skinned motherfucker with braids telling you to come here. Like you don't know what the hell is going on. He don't know if I got a gun. He don't know what the hell I'm trying to do. This motherfucker walks up to me by himself, like no security, nobody with him. I'm like, my name's Ludacris, man. You gonna hear about me? Here's my demo. T takes my demo. I don't know any other human being that would do that shit. Till this day, I have a crib. If I see a motherfucker saying, "Hey, Luda, come right. here, come here," I'm like, "What the fuck is you talking about? <laughs> right. man, come here. Right. Nah, but I like JD is he's one on one, man. When he made Welcome to Atlanta. I definitely knew what that shit was. Mm, mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's an anthem. When you know you yeah. can go on this Janet Jackson tour and you go to every other city but Atlanta and that's one of the first songs I do and the crowd is still going crazy when you're not even in Atlanta mm -hmm. and I'm telling motherfuckers, welcome to Atlanta. Right. 
Mm. You know what it is. Uh, Usher with Lil Jon. 100% Lil Jon sent me that record with Usher's, you know, verse on it. And I, like, when I say I knew something was a hit, everything else that I talked about to this point, disregard that. I got that shit. I was like, this shit is out of here to the point where take that and rewind it back. Put that shit on the front of the record and at the end of the record. And I'm going to do a verse in the middle of this motherfucker. I'm on straight this up, record. Straight up. This is it. This is that shit. Between that, Justin Bieber, I don't know where you're going with this, but I'm like, all I do is win. Justin Bieber, baby. Usher, yeah. Ludacris, moneymaker. And, you know, throw them bows. Move, bitch. There's a couple of ones that are just like, Ah, to this day, them publishing checks, they uh, mm. they they roll, they roll, they roll. They roll. Talk to you them. know what I mean? We got Talk rings, man. We got rings, bro. Uh, <laughs> big rings. Grammys. Yeah. Three of them. What does that mean to you? It means it, it's great. I want more of them, motherfuckers. Though. I want some more, man. But three is three is great. It meant it meant a lot to me because when I was first starting, the first five years of me being put in the same category as Eminem and DMX and Ja Rule and Jay-Z, and I'm just this little motherfucker sitting in this seat like, here we go again <laughs> with this shit. And then finally, after five, six years, they couldn't deny me no more. And it was like, I just started winning awards because I held out, you know what I mean? It's that longevity shit. That's Straight what happened. Up. Yes, congratulations. <laughs> the way to go. Speaking of legends, any truth that you're related to Richard Pryor? It is true to it. Um, I don't know to which end. You don't hear people say shit like this all the time, but he's like my fifth or sixth cousin, some shit like that. Yeah, <laughs> Google this shit if you don't know what that is. That, that means he's very far down the line of cousins, but we do share the same blood. It's probably where I get all this silliness and wanting to joke around and shit from, man. I studied Richard. Uh, he was born in, if it wasn't Peoria, Illinois, it was right outside of it, and my whole mom's side of my family it's from that area, Illinois. Partly why she probably went to University of Illinois. Mm -hmm. So that's Illinois, Illinois, Illinois. Yep, definitely dope. my cousin. For just, sure. Just farther, just far down the line. That's dope. Well, before we get out of here, uh, we just want to give you your flowers, man. Like I said at the beginning of the show, man. The the, the wait, man. We done already, man. I'm having fun, man. man they have the they fuck? have us on, they have us on the clock. They said oh, you had a hard out. So I no. do got other so, shit. So, yeah, I no, go so we got we, we got quick hits. We just want to <laughs> say like you know the way you've get, been able to continue to elevate and and do it in a positive uh, way and, and pure intentions is why we feel like you've continued to just and a real one master, Thank you, bro. That means real, real one. And, me. and we look up to you and you're someone that's kind of behind the scenes, but you know, you're still front and center. So we appreciate you. You know, I take that to the heart. I wish I could say you were telling a hundred percent of the truth because I might be on the backdrop and on this motherfucking wall, but you know, at some point <laughs> these, are dead, the... these oh, okay. are dead legends. These are dead legends. Oh take that, yeah. take that out. Yeah, I didn't yeah, see yeah, that. Sorry yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, right. uh, take that out the podcast. Uh, bring <laughs> yeah, that back. Yeah, bring yeah, that back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey man, thank you, yeah. man. I greatly appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um I accept all of those flowers. Yeah. I accept that y'all got me high here today. And yeah. uh man, listen, it, this it, ain't the this ain't the last time I'm coming back. Yeah, even on the crossover side of it, like I'm just getting into acting so to see somebody like you that come from where we come from and able to do different things. Like you said, they like to put us yeah, in the box and make, have, make us absolutely. do one thing that we're great at. No, we can be great at a lot of things. So you are a great example of that for even guys like me. So salute to that. Hey, man, that means the world. And thank y'all for supporting me way before you even knew how much you would support right. me. Right. Appreciate it. So, man, let's continue success. Let's build. Yes. Yes. Let's uh, let's become yes. billionaires, yeah. man. You got a lot of deals you need to talk to us about. <laughs> <laughs> Movies right. too. I'm absolutely. ready. Quick hitters. Uh, We're going to put you on the spot with this one. Oh, okay. uh, top five most impactful artists or group from Atlanta? From Atlanta, when you say groups, I'll definitely put Outkast in there. I'll definitely put Goody Mob. This is this this has to be just Atlanta? Yeah, just okay. yeah. Atlanta. Outkast, Goody Mob. Um man, it's like when you when you say just Atlanta, I wanna put like no limit in Master P. I know this is still mm -hmm. the South. Nope. Can't nope. do it. Nope. Influential. And it has to be artists or it could be producers as well. Both, you can throw them in there. Oh, definitely, um, definitely organized noise. Definitely Jermaine Dupri. Um, that's four. Who am I missing in this thing? I mean, Dallas Austin. When we talk about the the ones, you know, like right when I was starting and having that LaFace records and having the Rowdy records and having the So So Deaf, you got to think about that man. They started a whole movement that that just grew. Mm -hmm. So I would say. Those. Mm. 
What's your favorite car of all time? And is it true that you purchase a car after every Fast and Furious? <laughs> I do. Um, <laughs> nah, it is true. But the last two movies we've been shooting in London where the steering wheel's on the other goddamn yeah, side. Yeah. So I just said the hell with that shit. Yeah. But all the movies previous to that, I definitely own a car. My favorite car is still my 1993 Acura Legend. Mm. And I still drive it to this day. 250 thousand miles yes. on that thing <laughs> built to last my, if it's not that car my favorite car of all times is the ford gt and i love it Ford gt man i love that car bro no traction control the gear shifting how that's like it's so unique the way that it looks the way it drives the tires to this day you could drive a 20 30 year old ford gt and you drive down the street motherfuckers gonna be like what in the fuck is mm. that mm -hmm. it's dope speed uh, three must-haves when you're traveling. Three must-haves when I'm traveling. I mean, besides clean draws and socks and... <laughs> uh, um, man, this is going to sound random as fuck. Peanut butter. I don't know if y'all saw the, the damn commercial I did, the peanut butter commercial. I love fucking peanut oh butter, goodness. man. I can eat peanut butter every goddamn day. I have no idea what, what that is. But peanut butter is definitely one of those things. <laughs> uh, my Afro pick, I gotta have that. Yeah. Even if you braid it up. Yeah, I mean, well, because it's it's coming out <laughs> sooner point, or later. Right. That shit. <laughs> my Afro pick, and then, uh, man, my uh, right right now, this big ass Atlanta World Series ring uh, that I got right here. Just gotta show this shit up. Big. <laughs> there go, there go your three. That shit bigger than yours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you look. The, you see this face before he answered. Yeah. Hell yeah! I got three of them though. Nice. <clears throat> um, five dinner guests, dead or alive? Tupac, Biggie, Barack Obama, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King. Damn. Dope, dope, solid five. That would be one hell of a dinner, man. <sighs> Sheesh. Who would you like to see on our show? But. Before you answer that question, yep. you have to help us get your answer on the show. Damn, I'm back. That'd be I'm back. one of you. Gonna leave me <laughs> oh yeah, I'm my bad. I'm back. I'm back. I was just, I was so enamored by the way you presented that. I yeah. know he's gonna I'm make back. it happen. Yeah, I'm back. He's gonna make it happen yeah. though. Yeah, he's gonna make it happen. A lot of people don't make it happen, <laughs> but, he but gonna he's it. gonna yeah. make it happen. Yeah. Hell no, yeah. I ain't making this shit happen. Okay. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who the hell? I don't because there's so many people that's been on y'all show already. Now we gotta come think of someone who hasn't uh, been Rock, on here. The Rock, Mark Wahlberg, Vin Diesel. I would definitely say, um, I think Mark Wahlberg needs to come on. Here, yes. Man. I've been back yes. and forth. We already talked about The Rock, so yes. that was a yeah. given, but I, I feel like Mark has a lot. Make sure we he have, has a lot of games. Make sure we have my audition mm -hmm. tape ready, you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah Mark, Mark got to do shoot it, your man. Shit. That's a, I like, because when I said two of the most disciplined people I know, The Rock and him, mm -hmm. that's a good reason for you to try and get him right. on here, because okay. he needs to share some of that discipline. Let me tell you how random <laughs> I got to know Mark Wahlberg was. So maybe like two years ago, I put a, a Instagram post, like a selfie, like, hey, uh, I'm, I'm taking my family on a, 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 a camping trip. I'm looking for a big, you know, if you could... Uh, uh, RV to rent if you can recommend anybody. <laughs> this motherfucker DMs me and tells me I can take his. And I, I've seen him, but what? I've never really met him. That's crazy. His RV? This dude. You could definitely get listen, him on the show. Listen, listen, listen. <laughs> now, we've been back and forth on, on, on getting him on the show, but yeah, listen yeah. how round and so. It was, it, I find out, I, I was like, look, I was like, damn, baby, is that him? She's like, well, this the star. So I hit him back, like, yeah, for real. So this dude lets me borrow his shit. That's hard. We're at the gas station. An old lady backs into me oh. and scrapes the side. So I have to end up fucking paying for a new wow. panel door for it and everything. But Damn. random situation that that that's how me and him kind of met. And then we just saw him at the fight recently. Huge basketball but, fan, man. Yeah, but just I random. I think y'all can make this happen. Yeah, I'm just yeah. being honest. He's going to yeah. be the one. But like I said, just great dude. Like I don't really know him, know him. I've just always fought him. And then he randomly just let me use his motherfucking RV to go take my family camping. Yeah, he must not know how bad my kids are. Yeah, he a G for that. We though. held it down. He just though. sold his house. The motherfucker lived like 15 minutes away yeah. from here, but now it's, yeah, he's he, in Vegas. Yeah, or he's out. Yeah, he, he's he out moved of out of here. Yeah, um, man, that's it. You got a, a little package to give him? Sure do, my brother. Thank y'all, man. All the smoke gear. Appreciate Where can you get that. This, yeah, all the smoke dot store, man. Yeah, all the smoke dot store. Pull up. <laughs> we appreciate Log plug, it, plug. Yeah, Log in. shameless get plug. Well, Luda, man, we appreciate you. That's Thank a wrap. You, you can catch this uh, Showtime Basketball YouTube and the iHeart platform, Black Effects. We'll see y'all next week. Hell yeah.
It's finally here. Took you long enough? The moment you've been waiting for. Can we get on with this, please? The movie critics and audiences love is now streaming on Paramount+. Plus. You can't deny the people what they crave. Oh, we got him now! It's fairly wonderful. Oh, I got a good feeling about this. Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves, rated PG-13, now streaming on Paramount+. Plus.